assalamu alaikum and good afternoon um, i am aisha and i welcome you all on behalf of octara in this one hour webinar on future proof your brand and marketing strategy led by sara dau uh, before we formally commence with the uh, session itself i would like to quickly walk you through the entire uh, uh, to the flow of the webinar so there will be a presentation by our lead presenter sara daud and then there will be a guest speaker who will reflect on his thoughts and his sharing on the subject and on the, on the side line you can on the right side you can see the housekeeping rules now i would request all the participants to be on mute on uh, listen only mute uh, that means you have to mute yourself and if you have any questions during the session you can put you can use the uh, chat box and put your questions in during the session if you uh, feel that you have a question you can uh, unmute and uh, open your camera and ask a question uh, but uh, preferably put your question in the chat box this session is being recorded and it's also live streaming on facebook octara's facebook page so if any of your friends or colleagues have not registered or uh, on zoom they can view it from our facebook page after the program um, after the webinar uh, those of the participants who will stay uh during the entire uh, session we'll get the e certificate of attendance from octara uh via while uh, via email and uh, also we have a group photo uh, which will be taken uh, towards the end of the session and which will be shared with the participants via email uh lastly if you find any te technical difficulty during the uh, session you can contact my colleague saremati who is also the co-host of this meeting Uh, now i would like to take uh, the opportunity and uh, talk about the recent initiative that octara has taken though the company is there uh, since past 15 years but keeping the current situation of pandemic um rco jamil danjua has came up with this um, idea of bridging the gap of learning and development because there was a sudden halt in the training and development uh, uh, in for, uh, industry and training and development he came up with the idea of creating a platform where people can get complimentary webinars um searched and curated from all, all across the globe uh, uh to facilitate our hr and not only hr but also corporates working in different functions and also anyone who's interested in personal and professional development so what's in it um the uh, the octara tcs webmall plus has all sorts of complimentary webinars uh e-learning material um uh, future trends uh, digitalization management advice trends podcast and what not so if you want to become a part of this group you can simply become uh, a member by registering to a link i'll put the link in the in the chat box later on the parallel side you can see um uh, another group which is called made in pakistan web hall a phoenix rising the objective of this group is to present a positive image of pakistan by posting uh achievement by pakistan and pakistanis around the world now here is a short video message from our ceo jamil janjua about what we do at octara have a look hi hello my name is uh, jamil janjua and i'm the ceo of tcs octara Octara is a company that belongs to the TCS group of family and it has established a enviable reputation as being one of the leading executive training service providers in Pakistan. A large part of our success is attributed to our chairman Mr. Khalid Wan whose personal commitment to encourage the development of the people at both TCS and at the Pakistan level it has been very very uh, stimulating and very very inspiring for us we take great pride in delivering high quality learning experiences which are based on extensive research of training needs after which programs are created working with the best possible trainer the content developed to address the needs then marketed as a series of leadership acceleration programs and finally delivered ensuring all logistics is taken care of to ensure a high quality learning experience our team motto at octara is 
to help you succeed. Thank you. So now we would like to formally commence the session, Future Proof Your Brand and Marketing Strategy. And for that, I would like to introduce our speaker of today, Sara Dow. A brief introduction of Sara. Sara has an extensive experience in the corporate world, and recently she is working as a head of corporate brand TPL Insurance Limited. Uh, formerly, she has she has been worked she has worked as a deputy general manager, marketing and communication at K Electric. She has also served as an adjunct faculty at Indus Valley School of Art and Architecture, where she was teaching copywriting, social media, and content management. She has also served in UAE in the company called Ju Experience, where she was responsible for looking after senior clients and also managing social and digital media strategy and execution. She is a graduate from Miami Dade College in Business and Management and Marketing, where she was awarded with the Fulbright Scholarship from U.S. State uh, Department. Tunisia. So without any further ado, I would like to welcome Sara and turn the stage to her and uh, 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 request her to proceed with the session. Assalamu everyone. Aisha, thank you for a lovely introduction. Uh, very nice of you. Um, so today I'm going to talk about how you can uh, inc incorporate some ideas and concepts into your marketing strategy to ensure that you are prepared for what lies ahead uh, with COVID, with so many things changing, the dynamics of the world and how the consumer receives information and advertising has completely changed, especially in the last two years. So uh, let's start the presentation. Um, Aisha, if you could just give me... Okay, so what is this webinar about? Future Proof Your Brand and Marketing Strategy. However, before we begin, I also want to tell you that what, what this webinar is not about. So this webinar is not about feminism. It's not about gender inequality, and it's not about gender bias. So kahi kahi you might feel, although you might feel that we are talking about gender and feminism and women's rights, it's not the case with this presentation. Simon Sinek is a British American author. He's an inspirational speaker. He's written a lot of famous books. Uh, the most famous ones are Start With Why and The Infinite Game. And what he says is that a lot of times um, our brains are very, very impressive, but they have the tendency to work against us because our perspectives are so rigid at times that this becomes a challenge when you want to look at uh, the wider picture. And this is very, very important to keep in mind, especially with regards to making a marketing plan, making a communication plan, an advertising strategy. What Simon Sinek says is that from the start, you must think globally. You shouldn't restrict yourself to the country or region or city or target demographic that you are working with, but actually position your brand to be ready for the global uh, arena. So three points from the golden circle that he's created are why, what's the purpose, um, how, how do you achieve what you want, and what, what do you do to make sure that your purpose and your objectives are achieved. So let's start with the why. Why do we need to think about this? Women worldwide influence Women worldwide influence many, many things. Um, I'm sure and you know that they have a say in everything. But it's not, it's not so small. 80% of all consumer purchase decisions globally are made by women. Um, influenced by women. 80% car purchases and about 60% electronic purchases are influenced by women. 
that means that the, your female target audience must get the right information when these decisions are being influenced. And I wonder if these influ if these insights are in fact applied to women, uh, applied to the business challenges and objectives that we have in our teams and our marketing strategies. So if we look at it from a, from a wider lens, uh, a female consumer is many things. We cannot limit it to one or two things or one or two goals. Uh, there is an entire persona inside um, the home and there is an entire persona outside the home. And this, this applies to, I think, all SEC classes. It is not restricted to uh, people who are very educated or not educated. It is not restricted to the bank population or unbanked population. Um, female consumers represent many, many diverse segments and at times these segments also overlap. So this is a very important point to keep in mind when you are planning your products, your product launches, your marketing strategy and your advertising budgets. So if we look at the gender ratio, and these are quite re recent numbers, um, across the world, every 100 females are, uh, the ratio to male is 102. In Pakistan, it is about 109 to 111 per 100 females. Um, and in a population of over 223 million, uh, think about that if we're looking at 50%, that is the number of your um, female consumers just in Pakistan. Uh, close to 40% of the Pakistani population is now urbanized. And again, 50% of that is female. And over 40% of social media traffic that we see in Pakistan right now, whether through mobile devices or um, other devices is um, female. So these are very, very important points to keep in mind, regardless of your target demographic. When you are planning your business strategy, have this at the back of your mind that 50% of your consumer is in fact female. Do you have the insights? Is your team equipped uh, to create a strategy catering to women targeting the female consumer? who is influencing 80% of purchases. So how do you do that? How can you ensure that you have the right insights uh, of female consumers that you want to target for your brand, your products, and get your money's worth from your advertising? David Ogilvy was a British advertising tycoon. This is a very famous quote of his. The consumer isn't a moron. She is your wife. And this is a very old quote. Uh, David Ogilvy uh, probably said this somewhere in the 70s, if I'm not mistaken. So he had the vision even back then uh, to understand that the female consumer is a very, very important piece of the marketing loop and the marketing strategy creation. Uh, here are a few comments that I recently got uh, on LinkedIn um, from people in the industry. Uh, one person said that they always loved the quote, but never understood why most uh, male managers could not make this connection, uh, despite having wives. And the other one was that women have a lot of purchasing power, which is overlooked by the Pakistani marketers. Uh, so these are interesting insights that I recently got with regards to the consumer is in the moment. Um, I also want to add that we are dealing with an imprecise world of averages. I'm not saying that there are no good male marketers out there. On the contrary, there are many uh, very capable and successful male marketers out there. Um, and it's not, it's not fair to say that all women are better than all men in marketing. That is also not right. Um, but do many superior male marketers possess a brain that has more female traits than the average male brain? So maybe if you think about it, somebody you've worked with uh, who has a wider grasp on things, who understands consumer insights of both genders, 
requirements of both genders for a product or a brand. Um, maybe you can also think about that person and see, do they have more female traits than the average male? Because that is, that is an added advantage when we talk about marketing strategy. So let's look at that. Is it a massive genetic advantage to have a female brain or have traits from the female brain? I want to introduce another person from the marketing industry globally. This is Mark Ritson. And he has done a lot of research on consumer behavior and brand management, including studies with the University of Pennsylvania. You can find some of that research online if you are interested. And what, what Mark Ritson says is, in a remarkable number of case studies, female marketers seem to outperform their male counterparts. The differences between male and female brain functions now provide that women have a massive genetic advantage when it comes to marketing. Simply put, their brains are better designed for it. So that's a very interesting thing uh, if you think about it. Because um, imagine what that means. I mean, we're already talking about 50% of your consumer being female. And then we're saying that the female brain has a genetic advantage, a massive genetic advantage to actually market better and know more about consumers. So let's look at why products fail. There are several reasons why a product can fail. I, I'm assuming some of you or most of you in this webinar are from the marketing fraternity. Uh, so products can fail for various reasons. Sometimes it's poor alignment which means that the customer didn't want the product, but everybody else thought it was a good idea. Technical issues, um, either it was very difficult or it was very expensive to build. Um, again, which means that somebody didn't do the research. Uh, insufficient marketing effort. Um, the benefits of the product weren't communicated well enough or weren't communicated to the relevant audience and the timing. So it took so long to either make it um, or get it to the market or market it that it was actually beaten by a competitor or it was just too late. So these are some of the main reasons why almost any product will fail. And all of this links back to research and insights. So knowing your customer is very important to start with. Does your customer actually want a product that you're designing? What are you helping, it, helping them with? Why will they use it? How long will they use it? How much money will they pay for it? Just a few thoughts to keep in mind um, when you're thinking about it. And again, I want to remind you that 50% of your consumer is female. So are you designing products which cater to 50% of your consumer segment? Female marketers are more likely um, to truly get inside the head of, a of the market and base their strategies on the real needs of consumers. Again, this is a generalization. I'm not saying each and every female marketer will, will be able to do this. But as we saw in Mark Ritson's slide, uh, there is a genetic advantage because of the way the female brain works. And we will go into detail with that more. Uh, male marketers are more likely to make the crucial error of assuming that their own thoughts and reactions can be extrapolated to those of the market, meaning that male marketers generally um, can assume that whatever they are thinking or however they are looking at a product or a product use, that is how everyone else in the market is thinking. So not only ma they might alienate uh, the actual target audience, but definitely alienate 50% of your consumer audience, which is female. So going back to the research that Mark Ritson did, women's brains are built for empathy. This is, empathy is a very, very integral part of communication. Um, communication is not about just saying what you want to say. Communication is about making sure the other person understands what you mean. So empathy plays a very big role here because it is, uh, it is the em empathetic skill that allows people 
to know what the other person is feeling, what their difficulties or challenges might be, and what is a problem that they need solved. So um, women are capable of producing better market research, uh, can work better for brands because they have an attention to detail beyond generic things. Uh, so even, I mean, if you think of females that you know, uh, even outside of work, uh, most females are very attention oriented. They look at little things. They'll pick out little details. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. It could be the tiniest things, while the men you know might not even pick that up. Women are better at brand positioning because they have intuition uh, versus the process of systemizing which men have. Uh, most women are less egocentric. Again, this is a uh, generalization. There might be women who are uh, egocentric. Uh, that's okay. But uh, right now, we're talking about the research that Mark Nixon did. Women can be more attuned to competition. And here, I would like to share an example of Nokia. Uh, so what happened? Uh, everybody remembers Nokia. Nokia was a very famous brand. Um, a, a few decades ago. And what happened was that Nokia became so blindsided with Ericsson as their only competitor that Nokia did not realize the impact of Google and Apple on the world and on consumers. Where we are today, and these are very recent numbers, if you look at the share prices, Nokia has the lowest share price today as a brand. Um, and this was because they did not take into, take into account the actual competitors. They fixated on one competitor and didn't take into account other competitors that were developing products for their target audience. So, um, and the last point here was women's brains age better. So this is again, uh, based on research. And I want to remind everybody that we're talking about marketing skills here. We're not talking about uh, how women behave, uh, what problems they may or may not have, just purely from a research and scientific perspective related to marketing and working in the marketing function. Um, so why do women's brains age better? Um, before that, um, think about by what age does a person usually reach a stage where they are a decision maker, uh, a manager, or uh, you know have the authority to give go-aheads. It's usually between the ages of 40 and 50. So this research was conducted, in fact, on uh, men and women ranging between 40 and 50 years. The female brain has a faster blood flow to the brain. And basically what happens is that this offsets the cognitive effects of aging. So women's brains uh, biologically age slower. Men, however, unfortunately lose more brain tissue, especially in their left, left frontal cortex, which is uh, the area of the brain which uh, controls uh, self-control and the consequences uh, reactions. So their ability to control emotions and impulses may gradually decline in 40s and 50s. Uh, women are able to control their age better, uh, their anger better, uh, and this ability increases with age. So again, I want to reiterate that these are, these are facts based on the research that was done on men and women aged 40 to 50 years who were working in marketing and consumer research. So if you look at it from that perspective, the implications for managers and marketers are quite obvious that how will uh, women uh, work versus how the men will work. Again, I'm not disregarding any gender. And am I really debating that women are better at marketing? So this is a question um, I would like you to think about uh, throughout this webinar and maybe at the end uh, we will come up with the answer together. Um, that are women better at marketing? Is that, what I'm, is that the point I'm trying to make? So before we get deeper into uh, uh, the what, 
uh, Simon Sinek's um, uh, what that we looked at in the golden circle at the start. I want to divert a little here and just um, take you through a few images and play a sort of a game. So some of the images that I show you, I want you to think about um, how you respond to them, how they affect you. Uh, would you buy that product? Would you like seeing that ad? And uh, some of the images also have a number on it. So maybe when that screen comes, you can just vote in the chat box, uh, which one you prefer. And that will be interesting. So let's go. So this is an ad um, from, I think, the 70s in Pakistan. This is the kind of advertising that was being done um, to target the female consumer. And now in the, in, you know, 2020 or 2019, we are not, we are not so uh, advanced. We are still doing very similar advertising to target women with similar products. So I don't see a lot of innovation, but that's my opinion. This is again, a very uh, innovative and leading brand from the 80s. I've tried not to use brand names wherever possible <clears throat> because this webinar is just for discussion. We're not talking about a particular brand. This was a very famous boutique um, back in the 80s. They were revolutionary, their advertising, their clothes, um, and uh, it became very big. Uh, look at uh, an ad from one of the famous boutiques now and see how it's almost the same kind of feel, look, personas. Um, have things changed over decades or are we still doing the same marketing that was done 20, 30 years ago? And what do we hope to achieve? Here are two ads for a mobile phone. Uh, one is featuring Atif Aslam. I'm sure there are many fans here. And uh, the other one is featuring uh, Myra Khan. So each ad has a number um, at the bottom, if you notice. Uh, what do you think, um, which, one, which one appeals to you more? Which one would want to want you to go and check the phone out, buy the phone. Ek mein piche ship bhi ja hai. Dusre mein background mein, I don't know what's happening. Um, also think about who are these ads targeting? Are they targeting people like you and me? Are they targeting specifically males, specifically females? And wonder about what the thought process might have been. So, I'm seeing um, a tie here, actually. A lot of people <laughs> uh, like Atif Aslam, I guess. OK, so Atif Aslam is the winner. Interesting. So just stay with that and think about um, why. Why you picked that ad. And would you actually go and buy the phone uh, if, if you saw this ad? Okay, so the next one, soft buns, fresh buns, great buns. So one, two, and three, which ad do you think appeals to you? And would you actually uh, want to go and try this brand if you saw these ads or do you find them offensive or inappropriate? Okay, so you can, you can vote, you can write a comment. I can see a lot of people are picking two, some people three, some people think it's inappropriate. Okay. So there's no wrong or right answer. Um, this is just an exercise for you to see how different people can feel about different types of communication and advertising. And again, someone must have sat and planned this campaign and thought about it and approved it. So was there any insight that they came up with this? That's what you need to, that's how you need to start thinking about marketing strategy. So the next one, 
look like a girl act like a lady think like a man work like a boss <clears throat> again a very famous brand this ad was released in south africa uh on women's day uh, i think a year or so ago and um uh it was uh, it it started a huge controversy because a lot of people felt this was um inappropriate and insensitive to females um challenging them to you know think like a man and work like a boss uh, but look like a girl and act like a lady um so how, what do you think do you think this is a, a question to the 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 males and females in the webinar do you think this is this is an ad that is appropriate do you think it's inappropriate do you think it's all right it doesn't matter uh somebody would like to put in a few comments um so i have a someone raise a hand but we'll be taking questions uh we'll be taking questions after uh <clears throat> the webinar is ended thank you mariam okay it's a little sexist it's a little self destructive uh it shows confusion okay thank you for that let's look at this ad uh you do the girl boss thing we'll do the seo thing uh so this is an ad that was released in uh the uk <clears throat> not very long ago and again it created a huge controversy and uh, it was uh, taken down the brand had to apologize uh, to the public <clears throat> because again this ad was considered uh, sexist and um, inappropriate and also almost disregarding what uh, females uh, are capable of or can be capable of um and lastly i think someone just asked me this so this ad is a uh, very it's a very hot topic right now this campaign by a famous fast food uh, brand i hope everyone's had lunch when now shit everyone got hungry seeing this i don't know um so how do you feel about this ad which one appeals to you one or two and again think about why um if you think it's inappropriate um write that down and just let's just look at that okay so it's offensive to women okay okay a few people have picked two some people have picked one okay not inappropriate at all some people think okay so as you can see um zenab likes both okay so as you can see ads have different effects on different kinds of people so everyone in this webinar um has a has a, their own unique personality persona educational background um and so on and so forth some people might think something is inappropriate some people might think it's sexist some people might think it's appealing so it's different for everybody and especially it's different for both the genders so a very big and important part of your marketing strategy is thinking about how your different types of consumers will respond to um a concept or a campaign and a very good way to plan in advance especially if you are going to spend a huge budget or if you are going to uh, create a big campaign is to maybe try focus groups research analysis and actually get the right answers um or some of them before you create your campaign and launch it okay thank you everybody for your comments um moving on let's get back to our webinar so the what so simon sinek said um how do you what, what do you want to do what's your purpose <coughs> excuse me how do you want to do it and what do you do to actually achieve your objective and your purpose um so let's take a look at that what can you do to make sure that your marketing strategy is future proof 
to some extent. Um, you can diversify your portfolio to support diversity and inclusion, um, empower women, and especially enable women um, by creating a gender balance at the manager and above level. Um, this will, the diversity in your team will help to actually identify lots of different segments, lots of different insights, research, and so on and so forth. So, um, it will be good to diversify your portfolio and create a cohesive team which can look at a wider range of things rather than limiting it to uh, just a male team or just a female team. Um, build understanding of consumer choice processes. So how do people decide what they want to buy? Why do they need it? Um, when will they buy it? How much will they pay for it? How do they want to buy it? Do they want to buy it online? Do they want to try it on in a store? And so on and so forth. Uh, work inside out strategically and let your brand intentionally embed diversity. This is a very important point. So this is sort of like the unsaid, uh, unsaid things that a brand does. So diversity should be reflective internally and externally. Uh, it's one thing to just talk about diversity on Women's Day, um, but actually uh, live that as a brand uh, choice and a brand value. Um, and this way, perhaps, you can be the consumer's first choice and you can win consumer loyalty uh, because your entire tonality will become more universal, not just catering to 50% of your target audience, but 100% or 80% of your target audience. So this is um, very important. Moving on. So what can you do to make sure that some, on some levels or many levels, diversity is included uh, in your uh, agenda, strategy, objectives? Would anyone like to um, answer that before I move on to the next slides. What can you do to incorporate diversity in your marketing team, your marketing strategy, your brand persona? Would anyone like to leave a comment on that? No? Okay. So, there are a few things that are that you can do um, to move towards a diverse marketing team. First is to remove barriers which are essential for changes. Uh, why is it that your team doesn't have uh, females or less females? Why does your team not have females in managerial or decision-making roles? Uh, these are things that you should look at. If there are barriers, how can you approach them? How can you change them? Uh, another very important thing which goes hand in hand with diverse teams is sensitivity and diversity trainings. So make sure you equip your teams with these trainings because it's very important uh, for the people in your team to understand um, the true essence of diversity. Uh, and again, going back to empathy, a very important factor uh, when we are uh, trying to embed diversity in a brand and in a cultural value of a brand. So there's a little table here. If you see um, cultural fit uh, versus uh, how you can add on or enhance your culture. So one actual culture and one is a culture you aspire for. Uh, what your actual culture is, uh, my drive conformity. Conformity means that everyone has to do the exact thing, same thing all the time, every time, and there is no room for uh, changes. There is no room for adaptability, agility. Uh, so there's a lot of status quo, nothing changes. Everything remains the same, whether it's the processes, whether it's um, uh, the decision-making, um, things can be very vague. They can be inconsistent. Um, Things can get reactive instead of proactive and things become very tactical. So you'll see a lot of brands that only respond tactically when something happens. Uh, they have not built uh, their brand persona or their brand 
image over time. Only when something happens, they react to that situation with tactical methods, koi scheme nikal di, koi a uh, competition kali but not on an ongoing basis and so uh, because of these internal things <clears throat> because of because of the way that internally how these things are working it remains undefined uh, and diversity cannot uh, be spearheaded in such a culture uh, while if you look at the other uh, set of the side of the table <clears throat> excuse me there can be an aspired culture that uh you look up to for your team and for your um teams across the board um and this culture will drive diversity because diversity is uh, a very very important factor in today's world uh i don't know how many of you follow uh, indra nuria who is the who was the pepsi ceo and uh, she recently or maybe not so recently did a talk about um how women can do almost all kinds of jobs now so while in pakistan we don't have women necessarily uh, driving trucks or working in factories uh, this is also changing and more and more we see um women taking on roles which were previously not done by men uh, so a culture that drives diversity innovation has principles is proactive and a sense of government uh, governance and evaluation <clears throat> i understand that a lot of this doesn't sound like marketing uh, and maybe this is a question coming in your mind that these things have nothing to do with marketing um but i but i disagree and i'll tell you why because at the base of your marketing strategy uh is your marketing team and that marketing team has to understand the concept of diversity has to understand the concept of uh female and male target audiences their needs based on the world we live in today so maybe 20 years ago women did not need to buy a car or get a house loan today they do maybe 20 years ago women did not need their own bank account today they have their own bank account they have investments and so on and so forth um some women are the breadwinners for their family they look after their entire house consumer products i mean it's an endless list so it's very important to understand that at the core of all of this for your business to succeed to make a sale to sell a product is your marketing and sales team and if diversity doesn't in, uh, exist in your teams you cannot compete in the future global market uh, or the arena that is before us now uh, i'm also looking at some comments here um from from different people uh, higher females in leadership positions uh brainstorming sessions and hiring people from different backgrounds hiring both genders yes uh, bilal khan has written this is hr absolutely this is hr uh but uh, diversity is now a very big agenda and objective for all departments and marketing is a very very important um marketing is a very very important department to consider uh from the diversity perspective because it impacts your bottom line it impacts your sales and your actual business numbers uh at the end of the day um i also want to talk a little bit about uh, the organization that i work for uh tpl insurance um and i want to say that it's it's really refreshing to see uh the kinds of things that are being created for women uh to be able to work uh in an environment which is easy for them to manage a work life balance so there are different kinds of initiatives which are helping women uh you know do all of their work but also not let their home suffer and this creates and we will talk about this i will talk about this just a little later why this is this factor is so important again uh when we talk about uh having a high performing team uh moving on so one is to remove barriers the second is to equip your team the third is to retain talent especially women in the team um uh, and this is again a very important point and not just uh not just uh, uh, related to women but generally 
<clears throat> so when you hire an employee, uh, especially in the marketing team, marketing function is complex. There are aspects. It's not just uh, one uh, function, but in a, in, a, in a typical marketing department, you will have three or four different functions. There will be digital, there will be uh, con uh, you know, conventional, there will be um, internal comms and so on and so forth. So it takes a long time to find the right team members and then to train them. And then if they are unsatisfied for any reason, they will leave. Uh, so the goal of keeping your, uh, retaining your talent, uh, be it uh, the males or the females in your team, it's very important uh, that they have some value being in your team. It's important to keep your team engaged, uh, focused, and that is how they will be productive. And it's very important, like I was just talking about, that the environment is very important. And this is why diversity is a very important part of creating your marketing team and strategy. Because if the environment is not conducive to the men and women in your team, uh, they will not, uh, they will not, uh, you will not be able to retain them, uh, no matter what, because um, the world has changed and people have a lot of opportunities now. So if you are training a resource for your function, make sure you have a plan of keeping them there. And this, is, this leads to the next point, which is to build a high performance team. So your step one is to actually form a team which is diverse. And your second biggest challenge is to retain that team because you've worked so much on putting this together. You've created a team which is trained, which knows what it's doing, which is getting results, which is creating amazing strategy. And then how do you take this to the next level and build a high performance team? and then measure the impact of that diverse high-performing team. This is where um, I will briefly touch upon this topic. Um, a high-performing team has four main characteristics. One is, of course, open communication. The composition, which we have talked about at length, uh, is uh, that it has to have a balance of diversity. The team has to have a joint um, plan uh, where are they heading? What is the objective? Going back to Simon Sinek, how, what, why? Why are you doing it? What are you doing? How are you doing it? And psychological safety. Psychological safety, uh, not to digress, but again, is a very, very important part of uh, the marketing function because you want everybody to be able to share their insights because that is what adds the value. If there is no psychological safety in your team, uh, people in your marketing team will always be afraid to share ideas. Okay, someone will shoot it down or judge them, or et cetera, et cetera. Um, so these are some important things to keep in mind if you want to build a high-performing team. And coming back to my question, which I asked earlier, that am I really debating that women are better at marketing? No, I have not been trying to convince you that women are better. What I have been trying to do is show you that diversity is very important for the marketing team. And diversity is um, the secret ingredient uh, that can future-proof your marketing strategy, whether you are creating a strategy for the Pakistani market uh, or you are creating strategy for the global market, or even if you're working as a freelancer, Having insights from both sides uh, is the secret ingredient. So lastly, uh, thank you for your time and attention. Uh, I also want to um, just share my social media platforms. If you come across an interesting topic or some content, feel free to tag me. And um, that's it from me. I would like to hand over uh, to Aisha to introduce our, um, to take this forward. Thank you. Thank you, Sara, for the exciting presentation. Uh, now I would like to invite our guest speaker, uh, Sayed Farhan Mahmood, a little bit of his introduction. 
Sayyid Farhan Mahmood is a senior HR professional and he is also a qualified associate of uh, a Chartered in Institute of Personnel and Development in UK. He is a key performance indicator uh, a practitioner from the Institute of uh, KPI Australia. And he's also a well-rounded professional with over 25 years of experience of delivering excellent results across diverse organizations in UAE and Pakistan. So Sayyid Far Farhan Mehmood, sir, please uh, open your camera and please share your thoughts on the subject. Thank you, uh, Aisha, for inviting me. And I'm extremely thankful, Sara, of your perspective of diversity. Uh, being into this professional world, uh, work with over 50 nationalities, cultural, religions, right? I think what Sara is saying, a balanced approach is the success for us. In a marketing perspective, we as Pakistanis need to see from a global perspective to a local perspective, as well as from a local perspective to a global perspective. Let me tell you, how diverse we are in today we are sitting in a city which may have a warm weather but at the same time we have cities with full of snow at this point in time in this month uh, how many of us realize the spectrum we have the population balance which sara said which is 50 50 almost there's another insight to that. The demographics, the age, we are one of the population with a lot of young professionals, right? We may not have the same idea which applies to me or you, a senior citizen, versus a younger generation. What do we really think to do about that? Another very interesting challenge is the linguistics. We are a country with multiple languages, culture, right? And cultural boundaries. What I also see sometimes, a lot of campaigns may look very nice. The linguistics used, the language used may only be understood by some. The mix of recent language, the mix of English and Urdu, right? With the messaging and all that might not be understood by a lot. So from a brand perspective, we need to, before we go global, at least we need to geographically align ourselves the local spectrum of things which we have. Uh, therefore, the standardization across what everyone understands is the need of the time and need of the success of any organization. Another thing uh, I would further add to Sarah's perspective of gender diversity, Pakistan has a very large population of differently enabled men, women, and people, right? We need to cater that. They are also our consumers. They are also influencers in the market. Very recently, uh, again, I won't take a name of a brand, very recently, we have seen multiple uh, SUVs launched in this country. Uh, SUV stands for a sports utility vehicle, right? I yet to have to see the capability and advantages of those vehicles, which could be multiple from an urban to a rural, from a land to a mountain, right? So I think Sarah has given a very good spectrum how creative things can come and be taken. I would just add a few more things. I think the brand, the marketing, the campaigns should have the thoughtfulness, the creativity, and the wisdom to cover this fifth largest population of the world, right? along with a perspective to become a global one day. So let's not restrict our thought with what used to happen. Let's see what is the future. Now, after COVID, the marketing and branding has another level because the social media is the different norm. 
how would we do the same with a publicly published ad versus the social media ad? It's a long way to go. We all need to think the way the new normal would be and promote us as a global brand. Let's be Pakistani, buy Pakistani and make it happen. That is the win for everyone in this country. Thank you. Thank you, Aisha. Uh, thank you, Faranza, for your thoughts and insights on the, on the subject and uh, sharing some very powerful thoughts regarding marketing and branding. Uh, I would like to take a moment and uh, quickly uh, share a few things about what, how Octara has practiced uh, diversity over the period of 15 years. So and as an example to the, to, the, to the subject to how you future proof your marketing and branding uh, strategy, uh, uh, linking to diversity, we have uh, in the marketing department, we have my colleague Zena P. Um, as an example, as like, like Sarah have said that females have more, you know, genetically, they are more inclined towards marketing and branding. So we have an expert Zena P. Saji, who is doing a great job in uh, enhancing the uh, marketing and branding of Octara on all social media platform. And um, another aspect of diversity and inclusion um, that we in, incorporate or we practice in Octara in two ways, like we bring uh, programs with international trainers and, inter and national facilitators across the globe. And they are pertaining to different subject matters and they are intended for diverse audience uh, working in a corporate world mainly. As an example, we recently had a program on digital transformation, which was done by um, um, Dr. Frank Peter. He's an expert on digital transformation. So this was meant for both uh, for female and male working in HR and marketing, and it was well received. And uh, the idea was not to boast or you know um, or, or brag about Octara. It's about how we are addressing the uh, issue of diversity. Secondly, I would like to highlight the um, panel discussion that we had on Women Day. So initially, we were uh, suggesting it to title it as Women in Leadership. Then JJ came up, came up with the idea and make it as a gender equality to you know achieving gender equality in a post-COVID world. So uh, it, it was a great panel discussion between uh, among industry practitioners, which on on which they have you know uh, shared their thoughts that how diverse team can actually bring better results to business. Uh, then I'll quickly touch upon different programs that are that you can see in the slide. Uh, back in 2017, when we had a collaboration with Management Association of Pakistan, it was uh, it was based on the theme of rising with millennials. Now, when we are talking about millennials, we are talking about male and female and how we can create and uh, create a better sustainable business for the future uh, uh, generations. Again, um, uh, on the left side, you can see a program by Lucy Cornell. Now she's a, she's a voice expert and she helps both men and um, uh, uh, women leader to, to, to bring their voice to the table and how they can you know, speak up with the right voice, with the right tone and you know, to, 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 to the target audience. And lastly, um, uh, keeping the current scenario, we have an expert on uh, coaching expert uh, who speaks on overwhelm and abundance. She, she basically uh, is an expert who changes the mindset. So we have we had a program with her on ex from anxiety and despair to a place of abundance. So to wrap it up, uh, I just wanted to share that how Octara is practicing diversity and inclusion, not in terms of, like Sarah had said, that it should be reflected internally. So we have Zainab Isaji who's doing a great job. And then externally, uh, as a as a as a as a as a menu of programs presented in front of you. So now I would like to uh, open the floor and A, and Sara, floor is your and all the participants. You can ask. You can put your question in the chat box, or if you are comfortable in uh, uh, unmuting yourself or opening your camera, you can ask the questions directly. Thank you, Aisha. G. Somebody had questions during the session. Also want to thank Farhan, uh, very well uh, said all the points. Thank you for that. Thank you. 
and 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 in the meanwhile people are preparing question can we take a group photograph with all our participants uh, camera on if they are comfortable everybody comfortable let's take a group picture uh, i'll request my colleague sare batik to you know take a group photo he'll intimate you sure, sure. and uh make the best po pose possible for the photo <laughs> sare mar we ready yes just wait okay so we are ready now okay Please. everyone thumbs up and a big smile Sure. Then thank you. So the podium is so, open for Q and A. So I suppose no one has questions. I think uh, there are a few questions in the chat box earlier. Um, so uh, there is a question from Bilal Khan Durrani. He is saying, "Assalamu alaikum. I am Bilal Khan Durrani, a BS Honor and Business Student in FCCU, specializing in HR and marketing. Would you like to connect?" she he wants to connect with you i think so uh, anyone who wants to connect as i had also shared in uh, at the end of the webinar um connect with me on linkedin twitter instagram um tag me if you find something interesting so yes you're welcome to connect okay uh before we wrap up the session i would like to i would request jj to say few uh, comments on the session ji assalam alaikum everyone uh thank you for all of you being here on afternoon and uh, spending time with us uh i think there's been a lot of useful you know useful insights that uh, sara uh, has uh, you know has made has made aware of, uh, has made us aware of, of and uh, thank you for han for reinforcing most of the things that uh, sara has said uh, for me uh frankly i have always been a person who has had more uh who has had more confidence in the abilities of uh, the female gender which is why you will see in octara we have you know two females who are running the programs as against uh, you know one male i would say and uh, the insights that she has made us aware about uh the uh, the benefits of getting the women perspective involved in marketing and in advertising is essential for success uh, as we know that uh, we have within us women uh, who have the potential to rise to levels that are even more and beyond what man has actually achieved you see for a man has achieved as examples you know women have in pakistan have become pilots before many airlines were having women pilots they you know they have actually been involved in politics as uh, prime ministers before many other countries have female prime ministers they have been astronauts you know i mean well women have become astronauts not in pakistan but eventually we will expect that to also come about and only recently i think um, uh, one of the pakistani women has become a commander a captain of a royal navy which is you know quite a quite a, an achievement especially you know if it is in 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 foreign for the naval academies so there have been you know very good examples of women having the potential uh, unfortunately uh, we tend to think we have a little bit of a ego um, the males have a little ego which is why we will see more advertising focused towards uh, males uh, with female models you know they it's the other way around see they use the females the models to 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 sell products that are meant for women as well but mostly you know they are to attract the males you know so a lot of insights uh, you know from masara uh, you know thanks for bringing out uh, the yin and yang in, in a human being we mostly focus on on the yin and not on the yang you see the yang being the female perspective and uh, i think um, in in uh, the advertising and the marketing is um, the kind of career path that is available to women uh, is is has been brought out very well by by sara i would suggest uh, though unfortunately i was going through the uh, 
the number of people that we have, which is 45 people, uh, participants, and I think about 30% uh, of them are females, which is you know something that I hope that the males will now go back into the organizations and encourage the women to be getting more involved in marketing and communication. Because I agree with Saran that uh, the women has, um, you know, their brains age slower. I, I can speak for myself, certainly, that my brains are really <laughs> going fast. And also the fact that uh, they have the ability to manage better and uh, they have the ability to control the emotions, which is I'm sure that most of the males over here will agree at home, you know, the, the mother or the sister is much more mature in terms of their decision making, in terms of the thinking. So, you know, a very valid point, Sara, and uh, thank you, Faran, for uh, reinforcing all this, um, uh, what she has mentioned. And um, I would like to take opportunity to thank both you, uh, Sara, especially, and uh, Faran, along with, with her, and also the, all the participants that have stayed with us till, till right now. Thank you. Most of them have come from good organizations, though surprisingly, again, a few of those organizations are have services or products for women, for males mostly, but not for women. You know, we have we have participants from Ufone, so that's where diversity would be useful. Master Group again, uh, Amreli Steel. Now, this is again an area that uh, I do not know how many women would be interested in getting to, into the business of selling steel. Uh, Parco again, uh, Jubilee Corporation. Yes, very much uh, a diverse, an organization that needs more diverse thoughts. Jaffer Group, TCS, and PSO. These are the organizations that uh, that are. Uh, present today in this uh, webinar and i would like to thank all of you participants and your organizations for encouraging us and giving us the the uh, the motivation to do more of this uh, for bringing about different thoughts on, on different subjects i would also like to thank aisha uh, zanab and salim my colleagues in Abdara, and the team that works behind them for for bringing about this program and delivering it to this level Thank you, everybody. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, Farhan. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, JJ. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I just want to take a few minutes more, uh, if you if you stay on the line. Um, so I would like to uh, actually quickly announce about our upcoming programs. We have a webinar tomorrow with uh, Zofisha Hasib on the impact of digitization and COVID on relationship. So it's on. Uh, it's between four to five p.m. Pakistan time. Then we have a program with Amir Qureshi on twelfth August. It's an online program on aligning budgeting and strategy. Uh, then we have a face-to-face -face program with Fazia Kirai on interpersonal communication skill using this methodology. It's on twelfth August. And lastly, we on twenty-fifth August we have a webinar with Kashif Afandi on branding and brand equity. So those of you who are coming to these programs will be entitled to Octara loyalty card, and with, which means that you are you can avail 15% flat discount on all our upcoming projects uh, programs. And uh, for more uh, details and registration, you can contact my colleague Sarah Matik. In the end, in the wrap up, um, I would like to reinforce that all the participants will get the E certificate of attendance. The recording of this webinar will be uploaded later on our YouTube channel. And uh, it's also uh, streaming on Facebook. So if you have missed anything, you can watch it from there. Thank you to all the Asha, participants. I would, Asha, yeah. I would like to add over here that there's a raised hand by Sayyid Kashif. He wants to ask something. Sure, please. Thank you very much, Janab, uh, for noticing the raised hand. And uh, actually, uh, when uh, Jamil Janjua was saying the, mentioning the names of the companies and particularly mentioning the female or the uh, feminine side of the working. So as being the representative Dalla Foods, I would like to tell that we are the one who is a basic, basic company. The brand equity is basically based on the women, right? Because uh, in in the start of the session, I text to Sara that when you're making the scenes, we have the product which is 100% and purely decided by the motherhood, right? From the very day, from being childhood, when you go to, uh, you know, even if you get married and you go to somewhere else. So you are the decision maker. So we have the product which is 100% feminine based <laughs> decision making. Right. So thank you very much. It was honestly a wonderful experience because it was my second webinar with Dr. and uh, Jamil Saab and uh, team Dr. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to be part of that because Sarim keeps on knocking me every time. 
and we look forward to work for as well uh, with Oktara, inshallah, very soon. I'm heading the capability, so it will be uh, definitely a future future prospect for me as well to keep in touch with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kashif. And, and I think uh, Dalda, uh, Dalda ke brand me show karta hai ke women's insights leke cheese banai jati hai. It's very reflective of the brand, and that's why I think that speaks for the success of the brand itself. Absolutely, absolutely. Once again, thank you, Sarah. Thank you, uh, Rehan. Uh, thank you, Farhan. And uh, thank you, Team Oktara. And thanks to all the participants. Bye bye. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye.